Hey guys, I totally meant to do this video earlier this morning, um, but I my mornings are just crazy. I work out and then I'm just running behind the entire morning, so it didn't get done. But here I am at work getting ready to go on my lunch break, and I wanted to just share with you guys um, some of the things that I've done to stay consistent with my business. And I've been thinking, you know, watching Joni and Johanna's videos, like what could I talk about and what could I cover? And I thought... What I would do is just kind of tell you, I've been a coach for two years, the things that I do now that I didn't do in the beginning that have made a world of difference in my business. And maybe some of these things you'll, you know, if you're a newer coach, you'll be able to identify it now that, oh, okay, you know, this is something Mary did that I'm doing that she changed because it just wasn't working. And maybe you'll be able to change it faster than I did and have better results and faster results than I did. So um, consistency in my business. When I started, I had a huge warm market. I was very unlike Johanna's situation. And I was really happy she talked about cold markets because um, I think, well, honestly, I'm just going to say this. We all start in the same position. We have you know, we start at the beginning and we all have a set of circumstances that we've been given that we have to work with. And there's no really no sense in crying about your circumstances and crying about your particular set of circumstances. It's really just about figuring out how to make it work for you. So if you're somebody who has a cold market, totally follow what Johanna said. If you're someone who has a warm market, I want to talk to you. So for me, I had a large warm market. I did P90X, I did Shakeology. I had a dramatic um, uh, transformation. I lost 50 pounds, I lost my IBS. As you can imagine, I was flipping over the moon. I knew a lot of people and I'm really involved in my church. So I'm around a social setting um, often. And so a lot of people saw me, they saw me on Facebook and they were asking me like, what are you doing? You know, how did you do this? Like, this is so amazing. How did you do this? And so I was telling them about P90X and Shakeology because I just loved it so much. And I was so excited and just like seriously, like on top of cloud nine. And I was sending them all to beachbody.com to buy P90X and Shakeology because I'm like, oh my God, you have to try it. It's so freaking awesome. Like go buy it, you know, and they were going to the site and buying it because I didn't know that I could be a coach and that I could make money doing this. <laughs> so I was helping them get started and helping them on their programs um, before I became a coach. <clears throat> it was into my the middle of my second round that I actually started coaching, uh, middle of my second round of P90X. So what I want to say is in the beginning, when I first started coaching, I was surrounded by that large of war market. And you might, if you have a cold market, you might be thinking, um, you're so lucky you have a warm market. And again, I want to say we're all given with our, we're all given a set of circumstances and each circum set of circumstance that we're given has pros and cons. None of them is just perfect. And the cons with having a war market are really the pros. The pro is that you have a warm market. You have a lot of people you know. The cons are that you have a lot of people that know you <laughs> and they're looking at you and they're, in your mind at least, in my mind, I was thinking like, oh, these people are going to be judging me because now I'm setting myself up as this um, big guru about fitness and health and I'm gonna be telling them what they should be doing and you know, all these people I've known for all these years are gonna be judging me. And honestly, that fear held me back for a long time from really living my life out loud. And that's the first thing I want to say is you have to live your life out loud if you're going to do well at this business, um, living your life out loud on social media, living your life out loud in public around the people that you know, and not being afraid to really share what you're doing. Because let's face it, what we're doing is freaking awesome. It's life changing. And not sharing it with someone is really detrimental to them. Like you're not doing them a service by holding back. Um, and then in that same vein, living out loud is not being afraid to show who you really are for fear of judgment. So when I started, I was adding to my war market by meeting people and adding them to my network on Facebook. Now these were people I didn't know. So they were coming in from a cold market setting into my warm market. And I remember feeling like 
I had to sh put on this perfect persona of the person that wouldn't offend a single soul because I didn't want to turn anyone away, right? Because I wanted everyone to join my team. Um, when the bottom line and the truth is that not everybody's going to like you. <laughs> not everybody likes me, okay? And that's okay. That is really okay. But when you hide behind that wall of like, well, I'm only going to post things that are completely non-controversial and, you know, they're, I'm going to analyze and, and second guess myself all the time about like, well, if I post this, is it going to offend anyone or anything like that? And of course we're, you know, you guys know, I'm not meaning, I'm not saying that you should be offensive to people and post things that are on purpose offensive. I'm talking about, for instance, me, I'm a Christian. And when I first started, it was like, well, if I post my Christian beliefs and I, and I post my, you know, stuff about what I'm doing with my church or in the, I'm a music director at my church, if I post my songs or I do anything like that, I don't want to turn anyone away. And honestly, like I really held myself back by doing that because once I hit a point in my business where I realized that I can add these people into my groups that their qual the quality um, their qualities and their personalities are completely opposite of mine, but we didn't get a chance to figure that out before because I wasn't really showing who I really am. Um, and then I add them into my group. Eventually, the real me is going to show because it's just who you are, right? And, the, and you're going to lose those people anyway. Um, but when I finally started just like being real and being who I am and not caring about whether I was going to offend someone, I noticed something pretty awesome. My war market was growing because I have like attracts like and values attract values and personalities attract other personalities and you will draw people to you who are like you and people who are like you will get you and they'll understand you and your team will grow faster that way and so what was happening is i was posting stuff that was just true me and not really caring about offending people and what that was doing is people were seeing it from like their friends posting and commenting and stuff. And I was growing my network through my warm market, uh, pulling people in just because I was being who I truly am myself. Um, so don't be afraid to show who you really are. Um, and then I wanted to also say what you do with your warm market. And next week we're going to be talking about growing your, your, um, network and how different ways of how to grow your network. So I'm not going to really cover that right now, how to grow your warm market, but there are ways you can grow your warm market through your warm market. And I will talk about that, um, on the week when we talk about growing our network. But, um, the, the last thing I wanted to point out of consistency that I do now that I did not do in the beginning, and that is tracking. And I know everybody's like sighing right now. You're like, oh my God, you're really going to talk about tracking. Yes, I'm going to talk about tracking because when I first started coaching, I did not track a single person because in my mind, I just have a great memory and I don't need to do that because I will remember there's no way I'm going to forget anyone. And then I started noticing, like I'd think about somebody like, oh, I'm going to check on um, Kay and see how she's doing. And I'd pull up the message. And my last message to her is a, um, invitation to hear about coaching. And she said, yes. And then I sent her a webinar and then what it's been three months and I never followed up with her to see if she watched it. What did she think? Nothing like it was just dead. And when you start seeing that happen, trust me, you're going to be like, uh, yeah, okay, we got to fix this problem. But by that point, I was so entrenched in my habit of not tracking that it has literally, it's something I still struggle with to, to, I have to focus and I have to be disciplined, um, purposefully disciplined to remember to track. And so if you can adjust these different, um, uh, limits, I guess I could call it in your business now before you get to two years in, <laughs> it's much easier to start a habit from the beginning and start a good habit than it is to change a bad habit. So anyway, I just wanted to cover those few things and I hope that you guys are getting a lot out of this training. I know I really am just listening to everybody talk and, and the videos that um, are being posted. So anyway, you guys keep going strong and I'm looking forward to big things with this group.